There is two major facts I want to talk about with fibromyalgia. Number one, fibromyalgia is not a muscle problem. I want to say this again. Fibromyalgia is not a muscle problem. I know this is probably confusing to most of you that suffer from fibromyalgia because patients tell me all the time, Dr. Haas, it feels like a muscle problem because my muscles in my neck are stiff, they're sore, I'm having pain in my neck. Uh, my shoulders bother me, I'm having problems and pain in my shoulder. My lower back is stiff, it's sore, it's painful. The muscles are hurting are nothing more than a symptom of an underlying cause, which we will get to in a few minutes. So if treating the muscle pain were to fix your problem, you would not have fibromyalgia right now. So there has to be, there has to be an underlying cause. And this leads to my second point, that the latest scientific research states about fibromyalgia and chronic pain is that fibromyalgia is a neurogenic condition. What this means is that it's a brain-based condition and the pain is generated from your brain. Let me explain this as simply as I can. You see, the problem is coming from an overfiring of the upper brain stem, which is this part of the brain right in through here. There are three parts to your brain stem. The upper, which is the mesencephalon, the middle is the pons, and the lower is the medulla. Normally, when your brain is working right, your brain fires down to this lower brain stem. When it fires down to this lower brain stem, it slows down uh, the upper brain stem, which is this part right up through here. So the brain fires down to the lower brain stem, which slows down this upper brain stem, the mesencephalon. But with fibromyalgia, you don't have this normal firing down to the lower brain stem. So you lose the firing. Why do you lose the firing? Well, you lose the firing, this normal firing, because of stress. I'm talking about physical, chemical, and emotional stress. You see, when you are stressed, the body releases cortisol from your adrenal glands, which sit just above your kidneys here. They sit just above your kidneys. Cortisol is toxic to brain. That's why a lot of people with chronic pain and are under a lot of stress, severe stress, have problems with their memory. So again, it's the accumulation of this physical, this chemical and emotional stress with some of the fibromyalgia patients that I see. They have had a history of physical uh, trauma, such as they may have had a car accident, uh, you know, causing a whiplash injury, a severe fall or an injury, maybe even a sports injury uh, that's caused problems to their, their head and neck area. Others have had more chemical stress throughout their entire lives in the form of smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol over the years. The biggest problem I see with fibromyalgia patients in my office is that they have severe, I'm talking severe emotional stress. Maybe they went through a nasty divorce or uh, lost a loved one. Maybe they've lost their job or maybe even they were abused physically, uh, sexually, even verbally or emotionally. All of these severe stresses cause a decreased firing of the brain like we talked about and causing this cortisol to be released, causing a decreased firing in the lower brain stem which leads to, right in through here, an upper uh, brainstem is overfiring. You see, when this upper brainstem overfires, it drives down the spinal cord and it releases catecholamines and norepinephrine into the bloodstream. These chemicals cause the type C nociceptor fibers, which are pain fibers. I'm talking small, very small pain fibers to become excited. And when that happens, you're going to experience pain up and down your body. And see, folks, when these small pain fires, I'm telling you, when they fire, they become excited. The patient may have um, back pain one day, right? You have knee problems the next day. Uh, there may be headaches uh, a week later, you know, or shoulder problems that same day, or arm pain. They may even get leg pain. They have all of these different types of pain, you know, throughout the days over a period of time. Let me just talk to you about cortisol again. 
You see, we said that these chemicals are released into the bloodstream. Why is that? Well, let's go back to that stress response and find out what's causing this. Well, what happens is, is that deep in your brain, you have an area that's called the hypothalamus. And when you have intense stress, intense stress causes the hypothalamus to release what is called, it's a big fancy term, CRF, corticotropin release factor. This will then cause the pituitary gland to release ACTH. This is another big fancy word, adenocorticotropic hormone. This hormone, this AT, ACTH, drives down the spinal cord, and then that's what stimulates the adrenal glands to release cortisol. Now, when a medical doctor diagnoses fibromyalgia, they're going to find 11 of, at least 11, of 18 trigger points. And the problem is with, with this is that the doctors may only find, say, eight trigger, trigger points, right? The, the doctor may tell the patient that, you know what? It's all in your head. I'm sorry. And go out and, and exercise. Well, you know what? This is crazy. Especially if you can barely put one foot in front of the other. You're not just going to go out and exercise. I'm sorry. So that's the way a medical doctor will diagnose fibromyalgia. Remember what I said. The problem is in the upper brain stem. See? This upper brain stem is overfiring. Again, that is the problem. When the upper brainstem overfires, it drives down the spinal cord via, by a, a big fancy term again it's called the IML, the intermedial lateral cell nucleus. A big fancy term again. This is an area in the spinal cord that excites the adrenal gland again to release catecholamines and norepinephrine into the bloodstream. This is what excites again those type C small pain fibers and this explains why you're suffering from fibromyalgia. So a medical doctor treats fibromyalgia with medications. Well, what if the medications don't work? You see, in many cases, patients will go through a whole Russian roulette of different medications. They may try this medication with no results. The doctor may, then may prescribe a different medication and not get any better. There might be a new medication that comes on the market and still patients are not getting better. And, and you know what? It really doesn't work. It really doesn't work. Unfortunately, this, this can continue over months, even years. And I've had patients that suffer from sometimes 10, 15, 20 plus years with fibromyalgia with very little uh, relief. You see, they're still suffering. And you know what? It's heartbreaking. As a doctor, it's heartbreaking, it's really sad to see people suffer so long. Folks, one thing that I know is that, and I've found, is that fibromyalgia patients, and the bottom line is, we need to get them to sleep better. Fibromyalgia patients do not sleep. The reason is they, they do not sleep is because of that overfiring of that upper brain.